Welcome to the Ask a Data Protection Officer. This time with the exciting analysis of the messenger Telegram. And this will be no walk in the park for the conspiracy heroes amongst you who have found their new safe harbor there, boy I tell ya. If WhatsApp offers more privacy, then everyone's aloe head should jump right off their head hair. But in turn, let's approach this factually, okay? We want to check the current top messengers for their security and include technology, law and economy. That's why I've worked out points that should make this check possible and help you to classify the results correctly. Because the point is that you can make an informed and voluntary decision. Since I know that most of us can't do much with long prefaces, here is the final results for Telegram. Telegram offers virtually no privacy protection, uses opaque and insecure technology and is run by a misleading construct of various companies and tax havens. I'm sure all of you who don't feel like doing the incredibly hard work of tapping your fingers three times across your smartphone to download secure messages are thinking to yourself right now, well, it's gotten exhausting these days. But maybe the following information will help your fingers to get on their feet. Ah, 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 ah. So let's take a look at the criteria that led to the poor rating in Telegram's case. On the technical side we have the questions. Is there end-to-end -end encryption and if so, is it secure? Is metadata collected and if so, is it anonymized and pseudomized? Is the source code independently verifiable and independently validated? On the legal side, we have the questions, are the terms of use in compliance with the GDPR? Of course. Is the privacy policy easily understandable, transparent and precise? Can users fully exercise their rights and is the process easily accessible? Where is the provider located and which national laws are in effect? On the business side, we conclude with what is the provider's business model? What is the asset value and ownership? What aspirations for the future are known? So a whole lot to wrap up. I'd say get comfortable and look forward to this trail. Let's start with the technology and the question of encryption. Telegram is based on the MT Proto protocol for processing the chat data. That means the messages. This is a symmetric encryption method, which is highly controversial because it is not INDCCA secure. This makes it possible to transform any cipher tags that are encrypted messages into other cipher tags that can be decrypted to the same message. Suboptimal, I say. A detailed explanation of these methods can be found in the sources. Since it is a very complex topic, it would make this video unenjoyable for any non-crypto specialists. Telegram offers only a client-server encryption. This means the messages from your smartphone are first sent unencrypted to the server and then encrypted there. But this also implies that the server can decrypt any content. And so can anyone who has access to the server's console. Telegram also offers end-to-end -end encryption, but only for the so-called secret chats. These are not necessarily easy to find in the app. Furthermore, Telegram can also be used as a web application in a web browser. For this, you log on with your phone number and then confirm access via the app on your registered smartphone. A really nice feature, isn't it? Unfortunately, it is problematic for security. Because your smartphone is no longer needed after confirming the registration, the data of the chats and all other data that Telegram has stored from you are now independently unencrypted accessible. This means that the Telegram server knows all this data and can decrypt it independently. Even with WhatsApp web service, this is more securely regulated because your smartphone must be in constant connection with your computer because the messages are processed by the app on the smartphone and then the computer only mirrors another window of the app. You can test this yourself by starting the web service or Telegram or WhatsApp and then switch on the flight mode on your smartphone. Telegram does not care. Let's have a look at the metadata in Telegram. So all the data that is not content of your messages. 
This is your phone number, name, registration date, activity history and all profile information. But also your address book, recent contacts, usage time and cycles, groups and many many more. Yes, yes, who gave us away? It was metadata, you hey! The real gold of the 21st century. Of course, the metadata is treated with the same technology and thus decrypted, stored on the Telegram servers. That means everything you need to create a detailed user profile of you is freely accessible and through the web browser variant can also be retrieved by hackers with little effort. You can find videos about metadata and what you can do with it in the sources. Now we come to the source code of Telegram and the independent verifiability. How could it be different with the who is who of privacy abuse called Telegram? Exactly. It's not fully disclosed, of course, and has also long been criticized for its opaque structure. It can't be independently verified either because there has to be a connection to the Telegram server in order to perform sign-up operations. Looking at the legal side, we can quickly tick off this area with Telegram. The official website offers neither an imprint nor a privacy policy. The terms and conditions refer to the terms of use where the transfer of data to third parties for advertising purposes is clearly listed. The information is not easy to understand or transparent as third parties are mentioned but not defined in detail. Same goes for words like services or features. The location of the company is given with a London address, whereas the head office is in the Seychelles. In both cases, it becomes very difficult to exercise one's rights, I reckon. Which is also supported by the spares contact information. So all in all, quite a mess. <laughs> Now let's look at the company structure and goals. There's not much to find on this, but in addition to the information on the London operation and Seychelles headquarter, there are two parent companies, one in the Virgin Islands and one in Belize. Tax havens seem to be an integral part of the business model, I reckon. Nothing is known about the distribution of assets and ownership rights and there are no planned corporate goals that indicate any economic development or strategy. The company describes itself as a non-profit organization and guarantees to remain free of charge with the service telegram. One can guess that it is financed by the resale of data for advertising purposes which is also deliberately admitted in group chats. The only known and certain fact is that Telegram was developed by Pavel and Nikolai Durov, with the latter writing the code and his brother providing the financial basis for the launch. Both are known for the development of the social net network VK as well. And that brings us to the end of our Telegram analysis, which gets a definite no in terms of recommendation. Telegram can't score in any category and is the absolute taillight even behind WhatsApp. In the next part we will take a closer look at Threema and until then read the sources, say goodbye to Telegram and stay skeptical. And uh, tell me in the comments how do you use Telegram, how long have you been using it, what have you thought of it before and also what revelations have this video brought to you. And has it altered your choice for Telegram or another messenger? Let's discuss about that and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.